Good morning, everybody, and very welcome at this first Into Power webinar on open water test facilities. More precisely, find your perfect open water test facility. I'm Katrin Kriel, and I will be your host today. I work within the team Blue Energy for the POM West Flanders, which stands for the Regional Development Agency of the province of West Flanders and Belgium. Before we really go into details in this webinar, I would like to go through some practical arrangements together with you. And I will just go to the first slide. As you can see, this webinar will be recorded, so you will be able to see the replay afterwards. We also know from experience that this webinar works best when you use Google Chrome. So if you have any technical problems, you can just switch to that browser. Also very important are the questions and answers. As you can see on the right side of your screen, there is a chat function. So you can ask any questions you would like in that chat function. Today we have Celine, our moderator, behind the screen. Behind the screen and uh, she can also answer your questions. And otherwise, you will be more than able to ask all your questions during the breakout sessions after the webinar. Even if you're not able to respond to your questions during the breakout sessions, we will for sure mail you. Okay, so I will just go to the full screen again. So um, you know me now a little bit, but I'm very curious to know who is behind the screen. So I will launch a poll, give you one moment, please. And normally when you scroll down on the screen, you will see the question, which role does your company have in the supply chain of offshore wind industry? Is your company busy with maintenance, more installation, research or development, or others you just can let me know Okay, and I can see the answers are coming in. There are a lot of people within maintenance, installation, also research and development for the moment. It's still changing a bit, so we will leave this poll open until the end of the webinar. Okay, so now before we go to the presentations of uh, the speakers, of our experts today, let me set the scene of this webinar. So first of all, why should you go and test in an open water test facility? Well, it is a necessary step between the onshore testing and testing in real life sea conditions. So it's really necessary for the development of your products. So if you choose to go test an open water test facility, then how should you choose the right test facility for you? Well, there are some main elements to take into account when you can choose your test facility. And I will change my slides again. As you can see, one uh, of the important elements is the accessibility uh, to open water test facilities. As you can see on the map, we have several ones within Europe. And today we are only going to discuss three types of open water test facilities. But within the Into Power project, we have made a dedicated website on test facilities where you can find explanation on all those test facilities within Europe. So for today also um, to assess the accessibility is really important for you to know how to choose your test facility. So uh, how far is the test facility from the shore to go and test. Secondly, we have the tailor-made services. So the range of services that an open water test facility can offer you will be very important also for the choice of your test facility. And thirdly, we have the lead time. So that's the time between the application at the test facility and the time you will be able to go testing at the open water test facility. So all these three elements will be taken into account by our three experts today. So I suggest we just go live to our first uh, speaker, which is Mr. Ben De Po. He is operations officer of the Blue Accelerator and one of my colleagues. Thank you, Katrin, and welcome everybody. One small step 
some of the biggest achievements known to mankind have been done by taking one small step. And I'm convinced that our open water test facility named the Blue Accelerator might be your ideal step or first step uh, offshore. My name is Ben De Pau, and I'm the operations officer of the Blue Accelerator platform. And I will explain to you in the next couple of minutes what uh, our Blue Accelerator platform is all about. And I will also be available for questions after this webinar. Now, speaking about small steps, our offshore platform is actually located only a stone's throw away from the heart of Europe, uh, from Brussels. Uh, we're actually located near Ostend at the Belgium coast. And even more, our offshore platform is approximately located one kilometer from the shoreline in open sea. So that's actually very easily accessible from essentially everywhere within Europe. And if you are at our coastline to travel only one kilometer, um, that's actually not that far. So um, the um, travel to our platform is very quickly. That said, let me show you what our test platform is all about. And for that, I will share my screen. So bear with me. Uh, I quickly share my screen. And now you should be able to see what our test platform is all about. This is our platform. So we have an open water test facility, as I said, located not that far from the Belgian shoreline. Our test facility consists of a monopile construction in the middle of uh, the test zone. And on top of that is a powerhouse. And that powerhouse contains all the equipment you need uh, for your activities offshore. And those activities can be done above the water using, for instance, drones or whatever. Uh, on the water, if you're looking for wave energy conversion or tidal energy conversion, and even below the water and on the seabed, if you're looking for uh, aquaculture or a subsea uh, testing. Let me come back to you for a moment. Voila. And if you are near our test platform, this is how it might look like. This was an example of a wave energy test. Maybe a bit more details about our test platform. Um, our testing zone uh, measures uh, several hundred meters in diameter, so we have ample space to accommodate uh, bigger installations. Um, that said, we have in the center of our uh, test facility, our testing zone, the uh, monopile construction, and on top of that, uh, the powerhouse. And that provides you with an interior stable working space of approximately 22 square meters. And on top of that, we have um, a top deck, an observatory top deck that allows you to add sensors or other monitoring equipment so that you can monitor all your uh, activities offshore. The test platform or the container is uh, located approximately seven stories above sea level when it's low tides. So that means if you are, uh, if you have a little bit of vertigo, just like me, the first time you would be at our test platform, you might in uh, might be in for uh, an interesting experience. Now, how do we now support your testing? Well, we do that in three uh, different manners. First of all, we have equipped and packed actually our uh, powerhouse with a lot of tools and equipment to support your testing. Obviously, we have foreseen all the kinds of power supply that you would need for your monitoring devices or actuators or whatever. And we made it as such that it's as, as plug and play as possible for you. So we have different kinds of voltages, direct current, alternating current, and so on. So that's plug and play as possible for you. On top of that, we have uh, different uh, broadband communication uh, systems set up so that you can bring all your data that you would generate offshore to an onshore location, but also vice versa. You could use that data link to uh, actually monitor or even uh, remotely control your um, activities from essentially everywhere uh, in the world. Second, and maybe uh, even more important, um, we also have packed the test site with a lot of sensors. I show you here an example in the slides. And all the data from these sensors we can provide to you. So there, these are typical mid ocean data, um, meteorological data, and so on. Even nutrient studies we're planning to do. Um, and all these data we can provide to you so that you can validate your testing um, offshore. And finally, we are located in, in Ostend at uh, the Belgium coast, as I said. And in that area, there are a lot of companies 
that can provide the services for you that you might require for your offshore activities. And on top of that, we have a cluster of knowledge institutions that can also support you in uh, thinking or contemplating on how your activities should be planned or executed uh, offshore. And with that, I hope you are as convinced as I am about the possibilities of our uh, offshore test platform. And you're probably wondering, well, Ben, how fast can we now come and launch our project at the Blue Accelerator? Well, good news. We can do this quite fast. Actually, it depends on the scale of the testing, obviously. But from our first discussion to actually launching our, our, your project in the sea, if you are well prepared, we can do this within approximately six weeks. And that's fast. That can be done very fast. But if you are well prepared, we will do everything in our power we can to support your project and get you launched as quickly as possible. And with that, I hope you are as convinced as I am and have uh, seen all the aspects of our uh, Blue Accelerator platform. And I'm really happy to talk to you after this webinar about your next small step offshore. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ben, for this very interesting presentation. I would suggest we just switch to the second presenter of today. That is Mr. George Crosley from FabTest. We're going live to the UK. Hello, can you hear me? Excellent. Hi, so I'm George Crossley. Um, I manage the Falmouth Bay test site. FabTest is a nursery test site predominantly for testing marine energy converters and component parts of these devices. Um, we've tested a number of devices over the years and over the two years that I've been managing the site, we've demonstrated the, the AMOG wave energy device from Australia and the marine power systems wave energy converter, um, as well as testing a number of cabling, mooring systems um, and components of marine energy devices. Marine power systems tested their device for, for about a year and a half at the state. Um, and I'll just I'll just show you a short video if I can share my screen um, of their of their deployment. Hopefully you can now see this video playing. Um, this is Marine Power Systems setting up for their test, um, a fab test. And um, there's plenty of uh, marine contractors in in Falmouth Harbour with with all the kit really that you would need um, to deploy a device and to maintain it. Um, there's about up to, up to about eight meters alongside at the docks and wharfs um, and 25 meters in the inner harbor. This is them out, out at the site, um, just beginning their deployment. Um, the site's very accessible, a very short distance from the harbor. Um, and so as you can see, that's this their their device there deployed, um, and I'm just going to stop sharing if I can, and move on to my next slide. So hopefully you can see that now. Um, Babtest is in the southwest of England, on the south coast of Cornwall, um, about three kilometres out of Falmouth Harbour, which is one of the deepest natural harbours in the world. And the site's sheltered um, from the west and the southwest from some of the most extreme Atlantic weather, which at this early stage of demonstration, um, you'd be unlikely to wish to encounter. There are some, is some significant weather that comes from the south and from the east, however, to, to test your, your device in, in extremes as well. So this, this shelter from the Atlantic weather makes it an excellent place to test new technology um, in, in its early stages of demonstration at sea. Um, and, uh, and this sheltered aspect allows for, for frequent access to the site for, for maintenance and operations and commissioning. The, 
the site's approximately three kilometers squared. It's pre-consented um, for marine energy converters, and we expect to be ready to accept floating wind turbines next year as well. Um, should an application be suitable and the device be ready, um, it can be deployed in, in approximately eight weeks. Um, typically, typically eight weeks um, from submission of an application. So the university um, who I work for provides support with this and has a vast experience in, in research and development of marine infrastructure. Um, de deployments coordinated with Falmouth Harbour Commissioners and, um, and, and their experience is you know, extremely important really in, in the organisation of a deployment um, with their, their experience in port and offshore operations um, and they'll carefully manage any navigational risk. The site is restricted to, um, to, to shipping and anchoring um, but any any risk is, is is well managed by by the university and by Falmouth Harbour Commissioners. Um, there's a huge number of very experienced contractors um, in the harbour, dock space, wharf wharf space, crane lifting, you know, really anything that you would need to handle heavy lifting, dive dive operations, um, installation, operation and maintenance, all all very close within about 30 minutes of the test site. The, the site's not connected to the grid, um, so any electricity produced should be dumped on the site, um, typically by heat exchange of, of water or air. Um, there's a range, as you can see on the slide, a range of depths from about 15 to 50 metres with a tidal range on top of that of five to six metres at spring. Um, and seabed of uh, sort of four different types really, rock, rock at the shallow end um, through gravel, sand and mud um, at, the, at the deeper end of 50 metres. There's also connectivity to shore from that site, communications um, via VHF set up at the university, um, 3G and 4G obviously and we also have a Wi-Fi connection for, for higher data transfer rates if you wanted to transfer any video or monitoring information like that. Um, over the years, we've got, gathered a lot of data around the site, both instrumented data, real measurements, um, and also modeling um, validated by these, these measurements. So we have most of the, the Southwest covered really in terms of understanding the environmental conditions, waves, currents, um, wind so we can both um, give you a good idea of what's happened in the past but also predict um, fairly well the, the most severe conditions that you might encounter um, as well as operating real time and providing real time um, data for, for, for any ongoing operations. So we have a mean recorded wave height um, over 10 years that we've been recording of um, just under one meter, about 0.8 meters. Um, the maximum wave height over those 10 years um, of about 9.5 meters, that's from a, from a large southerly swell in, in the winter. 100 um, year return period expected wave height of about 11 meters. Um, and then looking at wind, averaging about eight meters per second and then maximum wind speeds uh, usually from the east of around 26 meters per second um, and then a current speed um, of, of, of a maximum at the surface of 1.3 meters per second a depth average current speed of, of kind of maximum point, point 0.6 meters per second um, but I can tell you more about um, this kind of information if you want to stay behind um, at the the breakout sessions afterwards. And also, if you if you don't have time for the breakout sessions um, and want to contact me directly, then I'm very happy to to have a conversation. So um, here's here's my my details if you want to get in touch, or the organisers can provide you with those details as well. Um, so I hope that was inform informative, and uh, I look forward to speaking more with you. Thank you very much. So 
Thank you very much, George, for this also very useful presentation. Now, just let's switch to the third presenter of today, which is Kim Nielsen from Danmark. We just go live to Denmark. Thank you, Katrina. Yeah, I'm board, mem board member of Denmark, the test site in uh, Hanstrom. I will see if I can find the slides. There they go. Um, Danmark is uh, located at uh, the northern part of uh, Denmark, uh, at the west coast, about 100 kilometers from Aalborg Airport, and at the harbor, which you can see in the picture, which is a big industrial harbor. It's been a fishing harbor, and uh, now it's more uh, other offshore industries that are taking place there. The test site is uh, located quite close to the harbor. It's about two kilometers southwest of the harbor. The area which we have uh, for testing is about three by two kilometers, uh, located, as you can see on the picture. The area is marked also on ma marine traffic electronically and with markers so that uh, ships passing the area are aware that testing is taking place in this area. We had the first customer uh, by accident, uh, there was a ship sailing into it, but we have learned from that experience. And since that first episode, this area has been really uh, respected by sailors uh, passing through uh, the north northern part uh, of uh, the coast there. Um, we have two wave riders uh, installed at the site. Uh, one, on, uh, you can see number three, is on about 25 meters deep water, and the other one is on 15 meters of water. And they measure both wave heights and wave uh, current. Um, unlike the other locations, we don't have so much tidal range uh, in Denmark. It's about plus minus 30 centimeters. But the current and the current is mainly uh, wind driven. The maximum wave height is around uh, eight meters, uh, the 100 years uh, wave condition, and that is a significant wave height. So from the deepest point to the highest point of the wave can be up to about 12 meters in such a storm. Um, you can see two years ago we measured over two days the wave height and it varied from three meters up to 7.8 meters a significant wave height and these data are monitored uh, and uh, monitored by the wave riders and Olbo university helps with this monitoring and if you come test there you will have access to these data you can see the the waves typically come from the west and the current goes in the direction uh, northeast and the typical max current speed when we have the waves is about 1.5 meter per second. So in summary, Danweg is a realistic and rough site to test your equipment. The site is about two by four kilometers squared and it is installed near the uh, industrial harbor of Hanstholm. You can have the high quality data of wave mm -hmm. and current data in cooperation with Olbo University. And now I would like also to share a video about uh, how the testing can take place. And let me just see if I can find the right one. There it is. It's a company uh, called Wave Piston that tested in Hanstholm a few years ago and they have uh, made use of this uh, industry industry that is located near the harbor where you can have people help you with preparing your equipment uh, maybe improving it maintaining it and also you can install your equipment using for example the slipway which is at the harbor and you can then tow out uh, the system to the test site. Here, the wave piston is prepared. 
Some of the equipment can be installed from the K of the harbor with a crane. The water depth in the harbor is about uh, four to five meters deep, so pretty uh, big equipment can be uh, installed in the harbor. And here you see the weight piston being uh, pulled out from the uh, slipway by uh, equipment like the, the, the boats, which also then can help you uh, find the industry that will help you tow out your system. And also we have a, a, a software so we can predict the weather a few days ahead. So if you need like this calm weather to install your uh, equipment, this program can tell you when the suitable weather window will be available. And that is, of course, a big help when you have to hire maybe uh, somewhat expensive uh, ships to assist you. And this is uh, viewing from the installation of the anchors for the weight piston. And this is what it looked like when it was all installed and operating at sea outside Hanstall at Denbeck. And then you can see underwater what's going on if you dive. We have divers that can help inspect your system. And uh, yeah, this is a happy customer. So that was the presentation. And let's see if we can switch back to the meeting. Yeah. <laughs> so as uh, with the other uh, test sites, I will be in the chat room after the presentation here if someone have more questions. Thank you. So thank you very much also, Kim, for this uh, very interesting presentation. So before we go to the breakout sessions, I would like to ask you one more question. So after seeing those three uh, interesting presentations, do you already have um, an opinion on which test facility would suit your needs best? And I will launch another poll for this question. So now if you scroll down again on your screen, you can see the question, which test facility would suit your needs? So I can see several answers coming in. Um, is it uh, Blue Accelerator? Is it FabTest, Donwick? Or do you say, I need more information? That's also perfect. Then you just can come to the breakout sessions. And I see some persons also say, yes, I need more information. So that's perfect for the breakout sessions. So let me give you some more explanation on that one. Uh, okay, so um, within a couple of minutes, when I close down this webinar, there will be a web page that's pop up. When it's, uh, this web page is open, you will see totally uh, on the upside of the page a link to the Zoom session. So within this Zoom session, you will find the possibility to go to the three breakout sessions. So firstly, you can, for example, go to the breakout session of FabTest and then switch to Blue Accelerator or the other way around. Please note that it's really important uh, to use the Zoom desktop or the app and that you have the latest version of Zoom, that in that way you can see the breakout sessions. Please also know that when I close the webinar, you will also still have the possibility to ask questions via the chat function. And as already mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, this webinar has been recorded, so you will be able to have a replay afterwards. So I think uh, I there's only thing one left for me. That's to thank you very much for your participation today. Uh, please note that there's a series of webinars. So the first upcoming uh, webinar will be the one on wave basins and wave flumes, the 18th of November on the same time. You will already find a link to subscribe uh, at the end page. So thank you very much. And I hope to see you within a couple of seconds during the breakout sessions. Good afternoon.